This is Quinn with PTSD While Black. I'm melanated as fuck. Thank you. Anyway, I wanted to talk about how far I have come since the concussion, since the car accident. Um, I did laundry today, and I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my life in laundry days because... Number one, I hated doing laundry before the car accident and the concussion. I was like, ah, it never ends. But today I enjoyed myself while doing laundry. I also recognized how far I've come. Um, in the past, when I first had my injury, um, it was a long, drawn-out task. It was confusing for me to to sort out the laundry there at the laundromat. Um, even though I pre-sorted at home, it was still confusing because sorting in order is something that's um, no longer a strength of mine and um, since the concussion. And so that's, laundry is like all the things. It's all the things that my brain lost. <laughs> so um, there was that. I would often get nauseated and confused, and I'd have to repeat things to myself so that I could stay on task. Um, I would often have stomach issues at the laundromat as well, I noticed. Um, so it really, it was just hella extra, hella extra just to do laundry. Um, I'm glad in the past few years, it's instead turned into, okay, I have sorted the clothes beforehand, I now use a netted bag for some items. Because one of the things is when I'm trying to bend over to put laundry into the machines at the laundromat, it's painful on my back. The increased pain on my back would increase the brain injury issues, which was what was causing the nausea and stomach issues. So it was a fun production. So now that I have laundry bags, I just kind of like shove everything in there and then I push it all in so I'm not having to bend over again and again. Another fun tactic that I've used to help myself is um, when drying clothes, I used to just separate everything out and try to do them by their proper temperature. No, everything's going to go on medium or high. To hell with it. <laughs> to hell with it. Towels are on high. Everything else is on medium. Yes, my clothes are faded and I don't care because I finished my laundry and at least I know that they're clean. <laughs> um, so... It's like, okay, put less pressure on yourself. Um, I wear white infrequently, except in the winter when I'm wearing socks, and I think I'm just going to buy a bunch of black socks so that I never have to bleach socks again. <laughs> They're going to be on my feet. Do they have to be bleached? I don't know. I prefer my socks to be white. Um, so that's a thing. And... Uh, Folding the clothes. Folding the clothes was a challenge because of the neck and the shoulder injury. So being able to hold them up and fold them um, repetitively, again, increased the pain, increased the nausea while at the laundromat. Now, I do one of two things. If I'm feeling like crap, I just throw all the clothes into a basket, deal with having wrinkled clothes at home, and just hang those bitches up and go on with my life. Or... I now take my laundry basket over to a bench. Uh, so I, I, I sort the laundry kind of out of the dryer, like socks and underwear and all that stuff in one side. And then in the little push cart, I'll have shirts on one side, skirts on another. So that way I have some kind of sort system. And then I push the cart over to a bench and I sit down and fold. Because then I'm not engaging as much the pain in my neck and my lower back. Yeah, there's still the pain in my shoulder. But, you know, it's like, what can I do to reduce it? The reason why I'm telling you all of this is the same thing of how we deal with complex PTSD and trauma. Trying to do things like everybody else who do, does not, other people who do not have PTSD and trauma can lead to extra pain for those of us who have complex trauma and complex PTSD. It can lead to a longer healing process because we're trying to do things their way. For a healthy person who is not dealing with constant triggers, 
it's easier for them to say, okay, just get over it, suck it up and move on. For those of us who the trauma is repeating kind of a loop or a circle, there is a need to pause, to examine, to feel the feelings of things, um, ex accept it, and then to be able to move on. That's what has worked best for me. And that's kind of my laundry laundromat process. That's what works best for me is just to pause to review it, How what was the impact of something, to accept it and move on. For those of you who are healthy enough that don't go through complex PTSD, mwah, kisses to you. I'm glad that you can do what you need to do. But what I got to do for me to survive is for my life. And sometimes what, what I do that works well for me might kill somebody else. Who knows? But this works well for me. And so I'm here to tell my story and my experience so that there are other people who are trying to act like we're normal, trying to continue the normal patterns. We're not being pushed around by toxic positivity, saying, oh, just get over it. You, you should just be able to get over it. No, no. In reality, when I think about it, most of our nation is dealing with complex trauma in many different ways. But we've been telling each other to suppress it and just get over it. And we miss some vital steps that some people may need. Um, it's really easy for the privileged or people who are not experiencing severe trauma to say, just get over it. For those of us who are experiencing it, we go, yep, I'm triggered. This is, I'm safe in this moment. But this is how I feel. This is what's going on for me. How can I do it differently? What do I need? Can I be grounded here today? There's just some extra steps for us, and that's it. Accept it. There's extra steps for me with my laundry. Instead of being able to just take the cart over to a, a, a station and <clears throat> to stand and fold, I don't have that capacity. So I work with the body that I've got. Um, in 12-step fellowships, they, they use the um, big book of Alcoholics Anonymous as the, big, um, the main frame of reference for any kind of fellowship, whether it's for compulsive gaming or uh, Nicotine Anonymous or AADA, Shla, all their programs. But what it talks about is for those of us who have an addictive personality, we are like men who have lost their legs. We do not grow new ones. And so we have to rely on a power greater than ourselves because we're legless in order to do what, what normal people are who do not have those conditions, those addictions. And it's the same thing for those of us with complex PTSD, those of us with brain injuries. We are like people, normal people, who have lost that normal capacity. And we have to rely on a process greater than what we thought we could do on our own. So that's what you're going to hear from me in this particular space. And if it makes you uncomfortable hearing this, go watch another channel. Unsubscribe. I'm not here for followers. I'm here to express what my reality is because I know that there may be somebody else out there who's going through a whole lot worse that might need to hear this today. And I'm grateful for the people who did tell their stories about brain injuries when I was early on just so confused about why I can't put two and two together, why I can't remember my pen number, or why do bell peppers taste slimy? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and why do I like burnt food? And I still do. I like burnt food that's crunchy. Um, it's, it's, it, we need someone to normalize this experience, that this is our new normal, and we get to move forward with it. So I'm here for those of us who've gotten some extra bumps in the road and had to maneuver on our path differently from others. Yeah, hope this experience was helpful. All right, till next time, peace.